I encourage people to grow their own food because due to what's going on, you never know what the farmer is applying on their plants. Mm -hmm. So 90% of what we do here is mostly organic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, all, we, we encourage people to do organic farming. farming. So I would like to encourage people to grow their own crop. Hello, my name is Mark John. I am uh, a volunteer in Mission Foundation 2.5. And uh, this is our demonstration farm under the School of Sustainable Agriculture. We work among the refugees and uh, we have uh, students that work in the farm. You have such a lovely farm. It's really, really beautiful. It's eye-catching. I've been to so many farms. I've not seen a farm like this. Now, wait, let's go back. Why did you want to get involved in such a project? Or why did you even start to work with these people? We started this project two years ago. And uh, the reason why we started it is because of uh, during, is when they announced the lockdown of COVID, and we discovered we had a School of Sustainable Agriculture, yeah. and it came to us and we decided that we should do a demonstration farm. You've accomplished this? From yes. the time COVID hit? Yes. Wow. Anything is possible out here if you have that <laughs> Yes. Land. Now, what, how, what uh, made you decide on the crops? Yeah. to plant? What made you decide on which, part, on which crops to take on? In this demonstration farm, 90% of what we grow here is uh, vegetables. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do vegetables so that uh, it's not only a demonstration farm, also it's because we could support our community during the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So part of the farm, we dedicate it to the community where they come every evening to get greens for Are you for free yes for free wow. yes and then the demonstration farm there some of the refugees can come and yeah most of the refugees are students here yeah, okay. that we train so that uh we do what we call container garden uh, using a small amount of space to grow as much vegetable as you you want okay. so we educate them on that on how to go about that yeah yeah so this is uh where our production starts from this is our nursery beds. We mostly do the raised nursery beds, which are uh, table nursery beds, which are really so helpful because they don't, you don't get bacteria from the soil because mostly if you sterilize your soil and you keep it up, it means you can't get any bacteria that affects the plants. Like mostly when you're starting to grow plants, it's when mostly they get infected. So that's why we decided we do uh, the, the table nursery beds, whereby we grow everything here before we start to take them to the ground. Yeah. So we grow all the variety of plants here. We grow spinach, we grow lettuce, we grow tomatoes, we grow celery. Uh, we have Siberian kale, and we have the Italian kale, and we have the green peppers. This is uh, Omjaja, African sweet basil. I, I know it's the, the local name, the African yeah. sweet basil. They use it, it's a mostly a cleanser. So we, we use it for cleansing, like we take it as tea and things like that. So, but what you see here, this is actually what the, the real, this is the real spinach. It's the real spinach, but some people call a photo giant that is spinach, but it's not spinach. Then now, when we come here, this is where our medicinal garden starts from, where we're seeing the African sweet basil is here. Then uh, when we come down here, this is dill. It's, it's also used for spicing food, and also it's a medicinal plant. I also have uh, acacia, acacia is here. We mostly use this one if somebody has ringworm, those things that spoil people's skins, those fungal infections, we use it for, for curing that so we scrub on the skin and it goes off. Then also we have the cherry tomatoes. We have like uh, 46 types of, of tomatoes in the farm, different varieties. So this is the cherries. Uh, we have different cherries, even you see this one, it's a black cherry here that we have here. Then we have, um, we have the yellow cherry. Then we have the red cherry, we have the purple cherry. As you see this one, it's, it's really turning black now completely, but by the time it ripens, it's going to become more black. And it's going to be, it's a tasty one anyway. Tastes very nice. And then basically here we have a celery. It's a, a root celery. They, we, they use the root, like the root is medicinal. So we want to grow the roots so that we can extract the medicinal properties out of it. Then at these containers we are trying to utilize, like to recycle instead of burning them and things like that. So we get the containers and we try to utilize the small space that we have because we are in the small space. So we, we cut them into two. One makes two planting uh, stations. So this one and this one is one. So you cut them, it becomes 
two now two gardens for you. So we are growing here lettuce. Yeah, this is a colored lettuce which we we mostly don't have here. It's uh, the all the seeds came from America. Yeah, and uh, most of the seeds also came from Germany. So even if you see here the Rensori bottles, the Coca Cola, the Mirinda, all we are trying to utilize them. We are grow, we are trying to use them back. Then also like the iron seeds that get finished, like we have used them too much, we can reuse them by making gardens. Like we make raised gardens and uh, we, we plant things in it. Uh, this is a section for beetroots. As I said, we have uh, green pepper. As you see here, we have green peppers here. Uh, this is now the, we harvested the first harvest. So this is the second harvest coming now. So, but it's still looking good. Yeah, this is the second harvest coming. I know most farmers don't grow broccoli because it's very, it takes patience to grow broccoli. So these are our broccolis. And uh, yeah, we are left like with now two to three months to harvest it. So we are targeting the, the head, the broccoli head. Because we mostly don't eat the leaves. They mostly eat the head that grows from it. What you see here, we are trying to develop a solar dryer for most of the things that we have, like the spices, like the dill, the parsley, and also we want to use it for drying the medicine. So this one, we dry, we will be drying it in here. So this is the door. Then the, this is the tray for drying the medicines. So this is how we will be drying it. We got the design of this solar dryer from the state farm. So I have a friend there, the farm manager also there. It's my friend. So I went to him. Then I had to get this design from him. And as you come here, still we have the the tires, we are growing lettuce. This is also lettuce, but it's not a, a common type. Most of the things we grow here, they are not common things here. Yeah, we are not, they are not common. They are always rare things, but we are trying to introduce them so that we can, people can get used to them. Then now, uh, also this is lettuce. This one is uh, the one that I was telling you that it has, it has two colors, it's a colored lettuce. So we are trying to use pipes to grow also things because we want to at least maximize and this is, uh, it's called the Casa Banana. Then this is Aerio Yam. This is Aerio Yam, it's also a medicinal thing. It's a medicinal plant, which is really good for health. Then what you see here, these are kales. It's, uh, this one is the Siber Siberian kale. This one is the Italian kale. Then this one is, the one people call spinach, but it's not spinach, it's called Fortuk Giant, or Swiss Chard. That's the name. So we have like uh, three or five types of Swiss chards here. We have this yellow one, then we have the green one, and then we have the purple, then we have the, the the green one here. Then we have the one is more greener and a little bit white stock. Then we have tomato. These are open pollinated tomatoes. They are not hybrids. So they are also from, they brought them from uh, from the US, as you see this type of cherry, it's a little bit very nice. So look at this one. It's really very cute and it's very tasty. This is our microponics and uh, in this place we have the chicken up here and uh, we have the fish in the pond. Whereby the fish benefits from the chicken by feeding on their droppings. And what happens here is that from the fish pond, we have our some massive pump that pumps the water to our grow bed. And from the grow bed, it moves and uh, it filters the water and sends it back to the fish pond as a fresh water so that the fish can get good oxygen. And we also connected the, the pipe, which leads from the pond down to the mechanical filter, which is this one right here from the mechanical filter down to the bio filter and from the bio filter which produces the good bacteria that powers the plant in the PVC. So we are doing what we call the ICPC, which where we integrate chicken, plant and fish together. This is our bed section, whereby we have the geese, guinea fowl, and uh, we have about different uh, species of uh, ducks here, about five different species. We have the Indian runners, we have the Kayunga, we have uh, the Heron kind of uh, uh, ducks and uh, they are all here. 90% of what we do here is organic and if, if our bed tends to die, we don't throw it away. We take the, uh, we take the flesh 
out, out of the bones and we're able to decompose it and we make amino acid out of it to be able to grow our crop in a, in a very organic way. Do you have knowledge about this or did you learn on the job? Did you, have, yeah. did you have prior knowledge? Yeah, I had prior knowledge because I grew up farming. Okay. But, uh, but in advance, we had to learn it as I go along with that. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. How did you pick this land? Was it already actually, picked out? No, actually, we, this land doesn't belong to us. We are on a rented property. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, it's due to the connection. The owner of this property is in Germany. Okay. And uh, I connect with him when I was in Germany, and uh, we are right here. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you face any challenges? Because there's nothing perfect in this life. Yeah, yeah, we have some challenges. Those few challenges, like we are get, getting to the dry season, uh, we need a, a lot of water to keep on doing what we are doing. Mm -hmm. We have some of our tanks, but uh, that is not enough. So we need to dig more wells. A lot of people come in here, and okay. uh, we try to make them see what we are doing and encourage them to do the same. Oh, yeah. What are your future plans for the, for the farm? Yeah, the future plan for the farm is to be able to make this place one of the best centers. Because we have other students from other institutions that come here for internship. Mm -hmm. And some people come here for orientation. 90% of what we grow here is not from uh, Uganda to say. Yeah, most of the thing we grow here is mostly European and American. All right, guys, we've come to the end of this episode. First of all, I want you guys to know that all this wasn't there before COVID, okay? These guys started this thing. You know, they started a whole farm during the lockdown period. And you can do the same thing too. You can be creative and you can be innovative and play around with plants, you know, because farming is the future. And mind you, everything here is 90% organic, okay? nothing else is added it's all organic you know you can do the same thing like i keep saying they even gave me a plant they trusted me enough to give me a plant and we hope that it grows okay i hope i don't disappoint myself and i will make sure it grows into a full plant now please like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel that is kenganda follow us on all our social media pages kenganda nation instagram kenganda nation facebook kenganda nation twitter i am your host joanita till next time